everybody welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be going through how you can do a full colored pencil portrait in just five steps and so this is just going to be one way that you can approach a portrait of course there's many different ways that you can tackle drawing a portrait in colored pencils and this is just one of the ways that I use so for this particular drawing, I'm going to be using Prismacolor colored pencils, but you can use whatever color pencils you have. And in particular, I'm using their portrait set. And I really recommend this set for beginners if you don't have a large budget and you just wanna get some colors that are great for portraits. This set has 24 colors in that are all great natural colors that you'll use for all of your portrait drawings. Here you can see the selection of colours that I'll be using for this portrait. It's actually quite a small selection, I'm only using six different colours. I'll be using a white for the highlights, I then got a light peach tone for the blending. For a few brighter, more vibrant colours and glazing, I've got the peach and a henna which is more of a ready tone. And then for some of the darker shadows I've got a light amber and a dark brown. But obviously the colours that you pick will vary depending on the portrait that you're doing. So a few tips before we start the portrait is number one, always keep your pencils sharp. Number two is to try and shade with the side of the pencil and actually hold your pencils further back. This will really help you to get smoother, even shading as when you hold it a bit more further forward you can get some sort of darker pencil strokes showing through because you naturally apply a bit more pressure to the pencil when you hold it more towards the front and when you use the point of the pencil whereas using it on the side and holding it further back you're able to get much more even shading and avoid messy pencil strokes. Also use circular motions to build up layers of shading. This is really, really good, especially when you're drawing skin because this again helps to make sure that you're getting really soft, even shading and you don't have any lines showing through that can detract from the realism of your drawing, especially like I said, if you're drawing skin. And this makes it really easy to layer different colors over the top of each other to really build up a vibrant, realistic drawing because when you're doing portraits, you don't just wanna use one color, you wanna build up and layer loads of different colors to get a realistic result. Tip number four is only apply pressure when you're blending everything out or when you're approaching your final layers. Don't apply loads of pressure early on when you're doing your first layers because like I said, when you're doing portraits, you wanna build up loads of layers of different colors. And if you apply too much pressure really early on, then you'll flatten out the tooth of the paper and you won't be able to add as many layers after that. Now, before we move on to going through the five steps to build up this portrait, if you wanna see how I created this drawing in real time, then the full real-time tutorial is available over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Partridge. On there, you can get access to over 300 real-time tutorials, not just for colour pencil, but for watercolour, charcoal, and a range of other mediums. Each tutorial is in real time with full voice narration, and I talk you through step-by-step -step how to do each drawing in real time, so you can follow along with me. Or if you're not interested in a monthly membership or you just wanna focus on one medium or subject matter, then over on my website, I've got lots of individual courses to help you master the techniques that you need to know for your specific medium or subject matter. I've got individual colored pencil courses on there for portraits, animal drawings, so I really recommend checking them out, as well as courses, like I said, for watercolor and charcoal. If you are interested in my courses, then you can currently get 15% off when you use the code SAVE15 at checkout. And I'll leave a link in the description to both my Patreon website and my course website if you wanna check them out. But let's get straight into the portrait drawing. So the first step that I'm gonna take in this colored pencil drawing process is to actually build up a underpainting and you probably haven't seen this when it comes to colored pencils uh, underpainting is a very common thing to do for something like an oil painting but you can actually apply it to your colored pencil drawings as well 
And so for this underpainting, I'll be using my dark brown tone. So I'm using the darkest color that I picked out for this portrait. And I'm just using this to roughly shade in all of the values that I can see in the portrait. So this is just a monochromatic drawing that I go through from the face to the body, every part of the portrait. And I'm just using it to sort of gauge the values in each area, wherever the shadows, wherever the highlights. And then we can just glaze in all of our other colors over the top to really bring life and vibrancy to the skin and to the face and to make everything look a realistic color. But at the moment I'm just going throughout the face and I'm just shading in the values for each area. And you can see that where the skin has got a lot of shadow, especially where that hat is covering and overlapping onto the face and casting a shadow, I'm using a bit more pressure on my pencil and building up a bit more layering with that dark brown. But in areas where it's a very light value or just a mid-tone value, you can see that I'm making it a lot lighter by like I said, using the side of the pencil and holding my pencil further back to really build up that light shading. So that's how you can make the variations in the lights and the darks just by using that one pencil. It's really important if you wanna get very light shading with a dark pencil to hold your pencil on the side and hold it further back because that will naturally give you some lighter shading, not as much of the pencil will come off onto the paper. And then if you wanna make something a lot darker, then you can just keep going over it and building up more layers until you get it as dark as it needs to go. But this is a great way to establish the anatomy of the face by getting in the contours and where all of those shadows are. And it's very important when you are drawing a portrait to make sure that you're looking at the shape of those shadows. So how are the shadows curving around the cheeks? And for example, with the nose, is there more shadow at the side or underneath the nose? The nostrils are the darkest area normally of the nose. So look for the darkest parts of each feature and get them in. I'm now focusing on the mouth and normally the darkest part of the mouth is that middle sort of line where the upper and lower lip meets especially when the mouth is closed. So look at each feature in detail and pick out where are the darkest parts of each feature with the eyes. Here it was where the eyes are closed that was quite dark and then look at where the highlights are and you can see that the highlighted areas I'm pretty much leaving white. You don't have to add the brown pencil everywhere. This is just an underpainting. We are going to be building up a lot more different colors over the top. So just because you don't add the dark brown to a certain area and you leave it white, that doesn't mean that it's going to stay white because we have got loads of other colors to layer on top of this. And also don't be afraid to go darker in some of those areas that are more shadowed. It is super important that you do get a range of values within your portraits. So you can see that I have got some of the highlights which, have, which I've just left white, but then I have got really dark shadows where I've pretty much burnished and applied a lot of pressure with that dark brown pencil. And this is what's gonna really make your portrait pop. To make a drawing stand out, you need to have contrast in your work. So you need to have a range of values. You need to have those really dark shadows and those brighter highlights. And really, I'm just looking at the reference. I've got the sketch already down on my paper. I did that with a, a HP pencil and I made sure that it was nice and light before I went in and added the colored pencils. But you just wanna examine the reference part by part and identify where those shadows and highlights are. Don't get too bogged down and distracted by the fact that you're drawing a nose or a mouth or the eyes because that can be quite intimidating. So then once you've finished the underpainting, we can move on to step two, which is layering in those mid-tones. So for this, I'm gonna start off by using the light umber, which is that lighter brown tone that I picked out at the start of this tutorial. And I'm just gonna use this to go over a lot of the mid-tone areas where we haven't added too much shading with that dark brown because obviously it would have made it too dark. So we really wanna make sure 
that as we build up more and more layers, we're getting rid of that white grain of the paper. And in the mid-tone areas and those lighter areas, we're gonna have a lot of the white of the paper showing through at the moment because we wouldn't have added much of the dark brown in those areas. So it's important that we do go in with these lighter colors and fill in where the mid-tones and the highlights are so that every area has got enough pigment down on the paper. And every step that I go through, I'm still using the exact same technique to actually apply the pencil shading to the paper. You can see that I hold the pencil pretty much halfway up the actual pencil lead and I'm always using it on the side unless I'm doing really small details like the nostrils or the slits of the eyes where I need to be really precise. Most of the time, if I'm just shading in the skin, I will keep holding it further back because there's no need to use the point of the pencil. And I'm going in circular motions a lot of the time as well. Like I said at the start, to avoid getting streaky lines showing through. If you're using circular motions, you can't see where your pencil strokes start and end. They all just sort of overlap, which gives you a really nice, smooth, even look. But don't worry too much about it because we are going to be building up so many different layers that it will all come together and the colours will blend and fuse together as you go. Now step three is to add some of those vibrant shades in. At the moment we've just added pretty much brown colours and so the, the skin doesn't really have a healthy glow, it doesn't look very vibrant and that's where these other more natural skin tones are going to come in. So I'm going to start off by using the colour Henna and this is that red raspberry tone that's going to bring a lot of that pink tinge and that pink undertone to the skin. So in the reference photo I can see that the baby's forehead had a lot of pink undertone to the skin and normally you'll need to look to see if there's a pink undertone to the skin or more of an orangey warm undertone or even a yellow like a yellow ochre undertone to the skin or more of an olive base. So look at your reference closely and pick out the color hues that you can see and that will help you to pick the colors that you wanna glaze over the top of your underpainting and once you've added in your mid-tones. I'm especially using this color a lot for the lips to give them that nice rosy tinge to them. And I'm even going over where I've added in that dark brown. You can layer the colors over the top of each other to make everything fuse and look very cohesive together. Of course, I'm also adding that henna to the cheeks to give them a really nice warm rosy glow to them. And I'm still just using that same technique, being very light with my shading because you can always build up more and more layers and build up some darker tones and more pigment with the color. But if you add too much, it's hard to erase it and keep everything smooth at the same time. So I like to go really slow and build things up gradually. And then again, for the areas that are really dark and got a really intense pink tone to them, I am using some more pressure. You can see that there's still areas of the skin which I've left white, and those are the brightest areas that I'm just gonna be using that light peach tone on. And the next color that I'm going to use is this peach color, and this is going to be to fill in the majority of the skin now because we've just got this peach and then the light peach for the really highlighted areas to burnish and blend those out. But the peach is going to make a nice base color for our skin. So we're gonna be really adding this color all over the skin. We can use it as well to burnish, which basically means applying pressure to the pencil to blend an area out. That's what burnish means. So we can use the pencil to burnish out the darker areas where we know we won't need to add the light peach tone to because the light peach is a super light color. So if you was to add the light peach to these darker areas, you'd probably lighten them up and wash them out a bit too much. So in, at this stage, you can use that peach tone to start to burnish out those darker areas and also lightly layer it over the top of some of those highlighted areas as well if you need to. If you feel like there's areas that aren't super light but they are lighter on the value scale than other areas, you can go in and layer a bit of that peach to those areas as well. So at this stage, the areas of real highlights that you have should be decreasing with each layer and each color that you add in. 
So moving on to step four, this is the fun part because this is where we're really gonna blend everything out and it will remove that graininess and it will start to make it look more like a painting and a realistic drawing than just a grainy sketch. So I'm starting off by going in with that peach color, so the color that we've just used, and like I said, I'm gonna start to burnish out some of the darker areas using this pencil. And now this is gonna be the stage where you wanna add more pressure to your pencil to get everything to gel together and all of the pigment to fuse and give a really nice solid block color. And you need the pressure to really mix those colors together and get rid of all of the graininess of the paper and to fill in all of those little nooks and crannies in the paper texture. So don't be afraid now to go in with a bit more pressure now that we're getting to those final layers of this colored pencil portrait. But also if there are other areas that you wanna add more pink tones to or more shadows, then do keep that in mind and leave a bit of wiggle room so that you can go in and build up some more layers and make final adjustments if you need to later on. As you can see, I'm also using the white pencil to blend out those lighter areas and you can add some light peach to those highlighted areas if they aren't super bright. But for example, the tip of the nose and at the top of the mouth and the corners of the mouth, those areas were quite light and quite bright. So I didn't add too much of the other colors to those areas. I wanted to keep those bright so that we do have a large contrast in our drawing and so that it really pops. Because if I was to have added too much light peach to every area, then we wouldn't have those intense highlights, which gives the drawing the contrast that it needs. Once again, when I'm using the white pencil, I am applying a lot of pressure in there to get all of those colors to blend. So step five is just adding in the final details and finishing off the work to make sure you're happy with it and that it matches the reference image. So like I said, this is where I'm gonna go in and maybe add some shadows if I need to darken an area up or glaze a bit more of the henna if I wanna give an area a bit more of a pink tinge or use a bit more of the peach color if I wanna make an area a bit more orange toned and darken that up a bit. But you shouldn't have to do too much with this sort of step because you should have added in all of your layers before you blended and burnished everything out. But there may still be a few adjustments that you wanna do before you call it finished. Mainly I'm using this step to go in and add some of the dark crisp details with my dark brown pencil. But I'm also using my X-Acto knife to create a few details for the section of hair. And I love using an X-Acto knife to create hair texture because it scrapes off that colored pencil and reveals some really pretty highlights. So you can use it for textures in the lips and in the eyes, all over really. And if you're drawing someone that's older, you can use it to create really fine wrinkles. So I've got lots of videos on my channel about that and those techniques. So you can check them out if you're interested in learning more about how to use the X-Acto knife but it is definitely one of my favorite tools for colored pencil drawings. And so those are the five steps that you can take to create a full colored pencil portrait. I hope you found that an easy enough sort of technique that you feel confident that you could give a go. I like doing videos like this because it can be really intimidating when it comes to colored pencils in particular to know where to start and the steps to go about completing a portrait. So if you have just a simple method like this, a step-by-step -step that you can go through with any sort of portrait, then that can make it a little less daunting, I hope, if you wanna tackle one if it's your first time. So just to finish off this portrait, I'm actually using a marker base for the hat. I like to use mixed media quite often. So if I think something can be sped up by adding in another medium, then I do that. And in this case, I used the markers to create just the base for the hat. It was a really, really cute hat. And it was one of the main reasons why I picked this reference. And then I'm going over the top and I'll build up all of the details with colored pencils. 
but one of the great things about using a marker under base is that it fills in the white grain of the paper already so you don't have to worry about that you can just shade in all of the highlights and shadows over the top you don't have to worry about burnishing all of the white grain of the paper so I find that a lot more fun to do than having to build up loads and loads of layers so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'd love to know in the comments section below, what techniques do you use to create color pencil portraits? What is your method? Have you got a step-by-step -step that you wanna share for how you approach each drawing that will make it easier for beginners? And any beginner tips that you have would be great to hear in the comments section below because color pencil is definitely one very tricky medium to get started in. And so it's great if you guys could give your advice for others down in the comments section. So I'm just finishing up the hat now. As you can see with that color pencil layers on top, it really brings that hat to life. And it was a lot quicker to do than if I was to have done it all in colored pencils. And here you can see the final drawing. I love how this one turned out. And I think the skin looks really nice and smooth and it looks really nice and vibrant. Now, if you guys are interested in watercolors, then I do have a free two hour watercolor tutorial. When you join my newsletter, you get that for free. So if you are interested in that as well, because I know a lot of you guys follow me for watercolors, then you can get a free real time watercolor tutorial when you sign up to my newsletter. So again, the link for that will be in the description. But that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.